From Letters on Yoga, Tome 1, The Supermental Evolution, Sri Aurobindo, Part 2. We may very well attribute this flowering of intuition on the spiritual plane to a rapid reemergence of essential gains brought down from a previous cycle. If we analyze the spiritual history of India, we shall find that after reaching this height, there was a descent, which attempted to take up each lower degree of the already evolved consciousness and link it to the spiritual at the summit. The Vedic age was followed by a great outburst of intellect and philosophy, which yet took spiritual truth as its basis and tried to reach it anew, not through a direct intuition or occult process, as did the Vedic seers, but by the power of the mind's reflective, speculative, logical thought, at the same time, processes of yoga were developed which used the thinking mind as a means of arriving at spiritual realization. Spiritualizing this mind itself at the same time. Then followed an era of the development of philosophies and yoga processes, which more and more used the emotional and aesthetic being as the means of spiritual realization and spiritualized the emotional level in man through the heart and feeling. This was accompanied by tantric and other processes which took up the mental will, the life will, the will of sensations, and made them at once the instruments and the field of spiritualization. In the Hatha Yoga and the various attempts at divinization of the body, there is also a line of endeavor which attempted to arrive at the same achievement with regard to living matter. But this still awaits the discovery of the true characteristic method and power of spirit in the body. We may say, therefore, that the universal consciousness after its descent into matter, has conducted the evolution there along two lines, one of ascent to the discovery of the self and spirit, the other of descent through the already evolved levels of mind, life, and body so as to bring down the spiritual consciousness into these also, and to fulfill thereby some secret intention in the creation of the material universe. Our yoga is, in its principle, a taking up and summarizing and completing of this process an endeavor to rise to the highest possible supramental level and bring down its consciousness and power into mind, life, and body. The condition of present-day civilization, materialistic with an externalized intellect and life endeavor, which you find so painful is an episode, but one which was perhaps inevitable. For if the spiritualization of the mind, life, and body 
is the thing to be achieved, the conscious presence of the spirit, even in the physical consciousness and material body, an age which puts matter and the physical life in the forefront and devotes itself to the effort of the intellect to discover the truth of material existence had perhaps to come. On one side, by materializing everything up to the intellect itself, it has created the extreme difficulty of which you speak for the spiritual seeker. But on the other hand, it has given the life in matter an importance which the spirituality of the past was inclined to deny to it. In a way, it has made the spiritualization of it a necessity for spiritual seeking, and so aided the descent movement of the evolving spiritual consciousness in the earth nature. More than that, we cannot claim for it. Its conscious effect has been rather to stifle and almost extinguish the spiritual element in humanity. It is only by the divine use of the pressure of contraries and an intervention from above that there will be the spiritual outcome. All the phases of human history may be regarded as a working out of the earth consciousness in which each phase has its place and significance. So this materialistic intellectual phase had to come and has had, no doubt, its purpose and significance. One may also hold that one of its issues was an experiment to see how far and whether the human consciousness would go through an intellectual and external control of nature with physical and intellectual means only and without the intervention of any higher consciousness and knowledge, or that it may help by resistance to draw the spiritual consciousness that is growing behind all vicissitudes to attempt the control of matter and turn it towards the divine, as the tantrics and the Vaishnavas tried to do with the emotional and lower vital nature, not contenting themselves with the Vedantic turning of the mind towards the supreme. But it is difficult to go farther than that, or to hold that this materialism is itself a spiritual thing, or that the dark, confused, and violent state of contemporary Europe was an indispensable preparation for the descent of the spirit. This darkness and violence, which seems bent on destroying such light of mental idealism and desire of harmony, has had succeeded in establishing itself in the mind of humanity is obviously due to a descent of fears and dark vital powers which seek to possess the human world for their own, not for a spiritual purpose. It is true that such a precipitation of Asuric forces from the dark vital worlds has been predicted by some occultists as the one first result of the pressure of the divine descent on their vital domain. But it was regarded as a circumstance of the battle, not as something helping towards the divine victory. The churning of matter by the attempt of human intellect to conquer material nature and use it for its purpose may break something of the passivity and inertia, but it is done for material ends in a rajasic spirit with a denial of spirituality as its mental basis. Such an attempt may end, seems to be ending indeed, in chaos and disintegration, 
While the new attempts at creation and reintegration seem to combine the obscure rigidity of material nature with the resurgence of the barbaric brutality and violence of a half-animal vital nature. How are the spiritual forces to deal with all that or make use of such a churning of the energies of the material universe? The way of the spirit is the way of peace and light and harmony. If it has to battle, it is precisely because of the presence of such forces which seek either to extinguish or to prevent the spiritual light.